It's, it's amazing to be with people each day who have never been in this building and we love showing off. So people come here and they are just so impressed by A, how clean and wonderful it is because of the cleaning of the last 10 years, the Byzantine mosaics, the statues that we have, everything we have in this cathedral, people are just so impressed. And they just see this, what, well this, this amazing sight behind me and they're just knocked off their feet and they wonder why they're not here. One lady once said to me, are you bored coming to, to St Paul's Cathedral every day? I just brought her here and I showed her that and I said, now what do you think? Well, you can guess what her answer was. My favourite place is the choir where I get to work every day and where alongside the singing I get the chance to look up at the ceiling and see these amazing mosaics which were designed by uh, Sir William Richmond and he started them in 1891 and they cost £78,000 in 1891 which is an enormous amount of money. What I love about them is they glitter and shine in the most amazing way and they catch the sun and he went to Italy to look at Byzantine mosaics and he discovered that a way of using the glass so that it captured the light in a really beautiful manner. I think my favourite place in St Paul's Cathedral is the Nelson Chamber. I think during the day it's a very peaceful space, it's very popular with the tourists and um, I think it's a place where people have a minute to sort of take some calm and, and look around but I think I mainly like it because um, when we do events in there in the evening it looks beautiful when we transform the space. We do additional lighting and flowers and um, it really just looks amazing. Well I quite like the church floor actually. Uh, it's so quiet and peaceful. I feel like a heavenly atmosphere around me. And also the people here are very nice. My, all my colleagues are very nice, friendly and welcoming. I have my mom working here with me and she's no difference to me than my mom back at home. So it's really great place to work and I also tell you this, it feels really good. Well my favourite part of the cathedral has to be the majestic dome because even on the dullest and most depressing of days, it's like a quick fix. I can look up there and be reminded of the majesty of God and the power of the resurrection when I see all that light beaming through the windows. My favourite thing about St Paul's Cathedral is how technology has been brought in to combine with the cathedral's great history and its stories. So through the group tour system, the multimedia guide and Oculus down in the crypt, the interpretation for the visitors at St Paul's Cathedral has really been taken to a new level. People are always surprised when they come inside St Paul's and part of that surprise, I think, is in its technology. I think possibly the favourite thing work, working at St Paul's has been the, the challenge um, that I've been set. Um, some days we can have a very busy cafe and restaurant, but then on top of that we might have a lunch over in the chapter house for, for the dean and chapter, uh, possibly another, another seminar for a corporate client in the Ren Suite. Um, and then may have a reception or a dinner in the crypt. We could be looking after, say, the general public, corporate clients, charities, military, and also um, on certain occasions royalty, so a really wide, wide variety of people coming here. Uh, I think my favourite part is the front, um, reason being because where it was in North Transepts, obviously I was part of the work department that had to move it from there to where it is now uh, and put this base together. Yeah, it's quite a big project and obviously being the first thing you see when you come into the cathedral, you know, I can look back in a few years' time and feel quite proud that I was part of putting it together. What I like best about St Paul's is when I bring a group of children up from the education department in the crypt, we've looked at things down there, we come up the stairs and suddenly it's a sort of collective gasp as they look up and see the dome and it's, you see the looks on their faces and it's just you can see the awe there, and I think it really, the whole place develops their spirituality, whatever their religion, tremendously. First thing in the morning, arriving about half past seven, quarter to eight, walking onto the church floor, down the nave, into the dome, and the silence is so eerie sometimes, it makes the hairs on the back of your neck stand out, and I find it very, very moving indeed. And I'm not really a religious person, but it's very, very calming. I absolutely adore this icon of Our Lady. It's a very specific one where she's holding her child in this intimate way. And this is an intimate space in a far from intimate building. Great basilica like this. But people come in and they can just make a prayer whether they know that's what they're doing or not. With this expressive thing, which is a candle, it's so simple. But people, even if they would never normally set foot in church, feel moved to light a candle in front of this touching, prayerful image of Our Lady, and they can be expressing joy or sadness or desperation, or hope. 
they're just in a very thin place suddenly between themselves and where God is, really. My favourite thing would be uh, the diversity of the visitors that come through the cathedral, actually. Um, we get a whole load of different religions, a whole lot of different um, people from various countries coming through as well. Um, I think in terms of people with different religions, it's good for them to come through and they can experience Christianity for themselves. A lot of them have got pre-done ideas, which they've heard from various people, which often aren't true. And therefore, it's good for them to come through and just form their own opinions by coming to a service or by coming to the hourly prayers that we do. My favourite place in the cathedral is the Beehive, which is where we are right now. Um, I think it's probably my most favourite place because it was originally used as um, a smelting room, so it actually is one of the oldest places in the cathedral as it was first built to melt all the iron in order to uh, stick all the stone together. Um, it's also a space that we don't allow the public to see during the day, but we do use it quite a lot for our corporate events in the evening for sort of a breakout space or a green room. I think what's really good fun about it is that when the, uh, the clients come in, even though they're supposed to be actually concentrating on the event that's taking place, they actually uh, are just so interested in about the history of the room and, and more even that the acoustics, because of sort of the, the dome roof, when you sort of go into the centre, it, it is, changes quite differently and um, it's nice to sort of see them react and actually pay attention to the history of the cathedral instead of just using it for what they need it for. St Paul's Cathedral for me, uh, it's really about the people. Um, St Paul's Cathedral makes such an imprint uh, on you when you visit, but also as a visitor coming here, you make a real imprint on it. Um, you can see all the way through the staircases and throughout the cathedral, um, the lasting footprint left by everyone who came. Actually, one of my favourites is the Stone Gallery because I found so many interesting things inside, like graffitis. Actually, this is my favourite graffiti. It's from 1773 and you can only see it if it's sunny and the sun came from the west. In other ways, if it's winter or after 5 p.m., you can't realize about this graffiti. It's a lovely one, isn't it? My favorite thing about the cathedral is that when you come into, the, into work every day, you don't know what to expect. You get the diversity of services, of people, people with problems, people just asking questions. Um, it's fascinating to see that. For me, when I'm working late in the evening and come up here, turn the lights off, doing my round, and in darkness you see the lights from the streets reflecting on the building. Uh, for me, it's quite an eerie feeling, but it's a really nice place to be here at that time. Well, my favourite place in the cathedral is right over there. That's where I stand during all of the services and sing, and I get to look up at the organ. Um, the reason that is my favourite place is because my grandfather used to work on the organ. He worked for Willis & Sons in the 1920s and uh, was part of the team that rebuilt the organ right down in the west end of the cathedral when work was going on on, on the dome. And uh, so for me, getting a job here and being able to look at that every day felt like coming home. Difficult question, um, but when pressed, I think I would have to say the monument to John Donne here in the Dean's Isle. Not just because it's John Donne, one of the greatest poets and preachers of the 17th century, who for the last 10 years of his life was Dean of St. Paul's from 1621 to 31, um, but also because of how poignant it is that this was the only monument that survived intact from the Great Fire of 1666. And so when we look at this, we're reminded, especially when celebrating 300 years of Wren's Cathedral, um, that that greatness is built on a thousand years of greatness before. I think it's a great place to work here, especially when you come in and the public is coming and they can see a quite famous, most famous building in the world. And you're working here and you can show them around and say, wow, that's St. Paul's. And you think, oh, I'm working here, and that makes you proud. <laughs>